This is number 14, how did the Allies gain victory in the year in Europe? Sorry, let me fix that for you. Um, we're gonna talk about two front war, mobilization and victory. Um, the first place that you have to think of a two front war, the, in, in fact, in all the battles, the whole concept was that the Allies would defeat the Nazis using a two front war. And the first place they start out is at Operation Torch in Morocco. <clears throat> so you've got the Nazis, they're here in Algeria, in Morocco, and so you have the British over here to the east, and you have the Americans to the west, and they land in between there, and the uh, leader, the German general, Erwin Rommel, otherwise known as the Desert Fox, is defeated because he's got to fight a war on two fronts. And they're literally running out of gasoline. The Germans just do not have enough gasoline. So Eisenhower is so successful that ultimately he'll get promoted to be the leader of all the Allied forces in Europe. Now, at the same time the Nazis are fighting on the, uh, in North Africa, they're also fighting the Battle of Stalingrad. Um, they suffered huge losses because of the Russian winter. The city of Stalingrad was a major industrial city, and it was named after Stalin, the leader. It's kind of in central Russia. It's called Omsk today. And Germany controlled 90% of it, but it was completely ruined. I mean, it's completely destroyed, bombed everywhere. But then as the Russian winter set, uh, sets in, the German supply line is cut off. The only way you can get supplies in is through airplane. And as the weather gets worse and worse, you can't even fly in the bad weather. So Soviet troops completely surround the city. The German army is in there. And there's 300,000 people, 300,000 German soldiers in February 1943. And by the end of the winter, there's about 90,000. And the Battle of Stalingrad cost the USSR a million men, and the city is 99% destroyed. But after the Battle of Stalingrad, the, the Nazis are always retreating. And in the Soviet Union, they're always uh, advancing west. And the Soviet Union basically had been fighting for two years, uh, losing people. So over 20 million people were killed in the, in the Soviet Union during World War II. So <clears throat> after they've invaded North Africa, and after uh, the Soviet Union's attacking from the west... They decide not to attack France, they decide to attack Italy. So Roosevelt and Churchill invade Italy, and they've read their classical history, the way to attack Europe, um, they're reading from Hannibal, is attack Italy. So you attack Sicily first, and then you go up the boot of Italy. So they capture Sicily, then they take Mussolini, then they get all the way back up into Italy, and as Germany's retreating, uh, they find Mussolini disguised as a, uh, as a German soldier, and he's hung and he's shot. So Italy becomes almost a third front, some people say. Now, at home, how is this helping? Well, the United States has massive production. Everything is being made for wartime operations. Ford isn't making trucks, they're making tanks. Uh, you're not making pantyhose, you're making parachutes. You're not making lipstick containers, you're making ammo cartridges. And how do you get all these people motivated? You use propaganda. Here's a famous one, Uncle Sam, the United States, Uncle Sam, uh, motivating people to do their bit. And there is a kind of a dark side as well. You had the Japanese imprisonment. Uh, many Japanese Americans were seen as the enemy. And so President Roosevelt organized all of these Japanese people, or a lot of these Japanese people, into uh, internment camps. Some people call them concentration camps. Uh, all across uh, California and Arizona. Here's a famous one at Manzanar. Um, and so 36,000 people were imprisoned and wrongly considered enemy alien. And recently the United States just apologized for the treatment of those people. So here comes one of the most famous invasions of all time. So you've got um, the Soviets attacking from the west. The Americans have attacked uh, up in Italy. And literally on the day that Rome surrenders, the next day you have Operation Overlord. An operational overload is important. It's going to be on your exam. Um, you have in May 1944, they're all waiting to attack. They're all hanging out in England. And they're going to attack the coast of Normandy. And they kept Hitler guessing with a dummy army, supposedly led by Patton. By, by Patton. And they're going to make a fake attack on, pa on Calais. And they're actually going to make the attack at Normandy. And it's called Operation Overload. It's the greatest land and sea attack. It's also known as D-Day. So be prepared for that on your exam. So in Operation Overlord, they stormed the beaches of Normandy. Um, the Germans kind of thought they might be there, so there were some defenses, but they weren't very strong. Normandy's not a very good beach because there's no pier to land supplies on. 
So the Allies actually build something called a mulberry, which is a uh, fake pier so they can bring in um, supplies. So you have, after the invasion of Normandy, you have a million troops go through the German defenses. Um, and we'll show a video at the end of class. Of, or well, I'll show you a good clip on that so, um, in class. So General Patton's Third Army raced through, and Germans are retreating. In August of 1944, one month after Operation Overlord, the Allies get into Paris. And by September, uh, a lot of Western France has been liberated. Then in the summer, as summer gives way to fall and fall into winter, the Germans last uh, launched their final attack, and that's how I'm going to question you on the exam. Their final attack is known as the Battle of the Bulge, and it creates a bulge in the American lines. And if Hitler had actually been successful, he attacked through the Ardennes Forest again, he could have broken the supply lines, and he could have actually won the war. So uh, luckily for the United States and their allies is they had complete air superiority. Once the weather breaks, they actually dominate the air and they force the Nazis back and they won. So on the two sides, you've got the Americans and the British and the French advancing from the west. You've got the Soviets from the east and they meet in Berlin. Um, they did not want to invade Berlin and the Soviets actually were the ones who invaded Berlin. And by agreement that we'll talk about next unit in Cold War, they decided to split Berlin up. And then Ber Hitler uh, commits suicide, and that ends World War II.